The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning, everyone here at 5 a.m. Thanks for waking up with us. I'm Maddie Jansen alongside Alex Fisher. We first brought you the story as breaking news on sunrise yesterday. And as of news time this morning, the gunman in the Mojave mass shooting is still on the loose. No arrests have been made following the quadruple homicide. The victims include three women and one man. So the shooting happened just before midnight on Sunday at a trailer home on 8th Street near Cerro Gordo Road. The small desert community of Mojave lies about 60 miles east of Bakersfield and is home to about 4,000 people. Our cameras were rolling in Mojave shortly after the shots rang out. This is the site of America's latest mass shooting, a vacant lot with debris and a few trailers, an area with a handful of homes and not much else. It all started late Sunday night. KCSO responded to reports of a shooting in a small neighborhood in Mojave. Two women and a man were shot and killed. Another woman was taken to the hospital and later died. We don't know the relationship of the uh, four decedents yet. We spoke with a man who lives nearby and walked over to the crime scene after the yellow tape came down. He says he knew some of the people killed. Uh, I just really believe it at first. Oh, they're good people, as I mentioned. They're, they're very good people. Uh, I know them for, I know the, I know the ones that, are, that passed away, uh, I know them. So. Other neighbors we spoke with did not want to go on camera. And while they're devastated by what happened, they say they're not surprised by the violence. They say crime has risen in the area over the past six months. And now it's the scene of a mass killing. They, there's no reason for this ever happen to them. Washed out a portion of Sierra Way in the Kern River Valley is closed. This is just north of Highway 178. Officials are advising drivers to avoid the area entirely as the road has been rendered impassable. Access in and out of the area must be made through Kernville and Wofford Heights by using Highway 155 and Berlando Road. And another reminder of the dangers of the Kern River, which is experiencing historically high flows. Local first responders are warning everyone to stay out. Isabella Lake is the primary storage reservoir for the Kern and uh, could receive three times its capacity as the snow continues to melt. Right now, the amount of water coming out of the main dam at Isabella Lake could fill about two swimming pools every second. That is a flow rate we have not seen in more than 40 years. Turning to your 17 homicide tracker now. The search is on for a man accused of killing someone at a Delano apartment. 22 year old Gilberto Barron. Investigators say he shot and killed another man at the Sandalwood Apartments early Saturday morning. They say he got away in a silver GMC Yukon. He's considered armed and dangerous. If you see him, call 911. And it is official. Hollywood writers are not going to work today as thousands of them head to the picket lines. The writers are now on strike after contract negotiations failed to meet the midnight deadline. This is their first major walkout in more than 15 years. Now production of some of your favorite shows will effectively grind to a halt, upending the industry. In some cases, it will impact. The impact will be noticeable. Late night talk shows, for example, are expected to go dark this week. Four people accused of cockfighting in Tulare are under arrest. Nine roosters were turned over to animal control. One of the suspects allegedly had 26 gaffs, which are blades attached to the rooster's legs in his vehicle. 510 is your time now, and Governor Gavin Newsom is putting a spotlight on California's efforts to transition away from fossil fuels. He delivered a message during a visit to a former petroleum refinery in Southern California yesterday. Pedro Rivera with our sister station, KTLA, has more. It's the opportunity now to dominate in the next big thing. And that's exactly what California is doing. That next big thing is continuing its fight with the fossil fuel industry. Six times more green energy jobs in California than fossil fuel jobs. On Monday, Governor Gavin Newsom made the trip to Paramount to tour the World Energy Refinery to highlight the facility's work in transitioning to clean and sustainable aviation fuel, which they claim can lower airplane carbon emissions by up to 85%. That hydrogen has to be clean hydrogen. It has to be from renewable resources, and that's what we're 
developing today. Newsom met with union workers and toured electric and hydrogen powered diesel trucks, highlighting the impact fossil fuels have on low income communities, health and air quality. That impact is real and that pact is raw for people living in these communities. And so we are here with a sense of urgency, sense of intentionality, a sense of purpose. Paramount Mayor Isabel Aguayo says the transition was needed. The Paramount City Council approved the World Energy Conversion Project back in April of 2022. Our final stamp of approval to the permit confirmed loud and clear our dedication to ending petroleum production in Paramount forever. Since Newsom took office, the governor has enacted a number of climate proposals. In September, Newsom announced over the next two decades, California will commit to carbon neutrality by 2045, a path to a clean electric grid and requiring all cars and trucks sold in California be zero emissions by 2035. On Friday, state regulators approved rules that would stop the sale of buses and big rigs that run on diesel in the state by 2036. The automobile manufacturers all move in that direction, whether those that argue for the past like it or not. That transition is underway. In your 17 court watch, children took the stand in the West Boys murder trial earlier yesterday. Trizel and Jacqueline West are charged with second degree murder in the deaths of their adoptive sons, Orin and Orson West. A 16 year old boy who once lived with the couple testified yesterday. He says he witnessed Jacqueline on multiple occasions place younger children in a chokehold to get them to stop crying. The teen said he got angry but was young and couldn't do anything to stop it. The West two other adopted children and one biological child also took the stand. You can read more on our website KGET.com. We are now learning how much time a Bay Area man is going to spend behind bars for sex trafficking minors at a Bakersfield motel. Prosecutors say Darnell Edwards of Antioch took two girls to the Desert Star Motel where he ordered them to make $500 a day through sex work back in 2019. Edwards pleaded guilty to charges in December and was sentenced yesterday to 19 years and seven months in prison. A former deputy convicted of killing two prostitutes in the 1980s will again face a jury to determine if he'll face life in prison or the death penalty. Back in March, the penalty phase of the retrial of former Kern County Deputy David Keith Rogers ended in a mistrial. In 1988, Rogers was convicted of killing the prostitutes by shooting them multiple times, then dumping their bodies in the Arvin Edison Canal. The DA's office has decided to retry Rogers this August. The United States could fail to meet its debt obligation sooner than expected. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen now says the U.S. could run out of measures to pay its debt obligations by June 1st. NBC's Bree Jackson is in Washington this morning with the very latest. An urgent warning about the nation's debt. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says the U.S. could run out of money to pay the bills as soon as June 1st, leading President Biden to call leaders of both parties to the White House to discuss how to avoid a default. America is not a deadbeat nation. We have never, ever failed to meet the debt. But so far, the Biden administration and the GOP have failed to see eye to eye on raising the debt ceiling. House Republicans narrowly passed a bill last week to do so while cutting government spending. We will not pass the debt ceiling that just raises it without doing something about our debt. Top Democrats say that measure doesn't stand a chance in the Senate. It does nothing to resolve the looming default crisis. If anything, MAGA Republicans have made default more likely by locking the House into an unacceptable and very extreme position. Some Senate Republicans say the ball is now in President Biden's court and they're skeptical. Maybe he's even hoping for a debt default. He thinks that helps him politically to run against Republicans. Others in the GOP urge negotiators to hammer out a last minute deal fast. We got to move. And, uh, and it's simply unacceptable for people to begin to worry whether they're going to get Social Security checks. Yellen warns if the U.S. defaults, it could harm families, the economy, and national security interest. And, thank you. and President Biden has called the big four congressional leaders to the White House on May 9th. We're told that the president will stress that Congress must avoid a default without conditions and address government spending separately. In Washington, 
Bree Jackson, NBC News. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nextstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.